Now, I'm sure that this picture, this image, speaks to many of you in a painful way. And it did to me as well, in a painful way, for a long time since I came here. It took me a long time. I'm from a registered profession originally. So I had to register license, uh, just as many of you. Um, and it took me a long time. And I came here with 20 years of experience and a PhD in my profession and developing programs and what have you, and working. And it still took me a year and a half. And I thought it's the end of the world. And then I found out that other people from my profession took six years or seven years and mostly never. And so at that time, I decided that I have to do something to help the Canadian society improve the way it handles us, the way it embraces our talents into this big hole of talents where they need us. And I'm sorry I say they and us. It shouldn't be that, but just so we speak the same, right? Um, and so we are still struggling to get jobs. And even after I was registered, I must tell you, I wrote, I sent my resume everywhere, and I never even got an interview because I had no Canadian Thank you very much. No Canadian experience. And so I, ha I, I went ahead and I opened my own company. Um, and, and I still, uh, and now I have a, a, my own company again, even though in the interim I was working for a university for seven years. We all, we all intuitively prefer people who are like us, who think like us, who have a common ground with us, who understand what we're talking about, maybe who speak our language, who understand our culture. It's a natural thing. It's not a good thing. It's not a good thing when you're thinking about a multicultural society because we need to get out of that primal cultural thing where we're looking for people like us and enjoy being and working with people who are not like us. Because guess what happens when we're working with people like us? We think exactly the same. What's the problem with that thought? What's the problem with that? Same thinking. Yeah, that's exactly the problem, right? We can't be creative. We can't think outside of our own box. You know that, that saying? Think outside of the box. Well, the best way to think outside of the box is having many boxes thinking differently. Right? That's the best way. One of our problems is that when we move to another culture, we don't know it's different. We don't know it. Because we've been living in our own environment, with our own culture. We don't know our culture until we move and we see that there's something else out there. We don't know that we have a culture. What we know is normal. What the others are doing is not normal, right? You know how many times I've been going through these speeches and, someone, and, and many people would come to me and say things like, you know, you really need to teach immigrants about Canadian peculiarities. You know what peculiarities are? It means strangeness. And Canadians would hear it saying, what do you mean strangeness? We're not strange. We're the normal one. We're the ones who are doing things right. You're the strange one. You know, and that, and that again is very human. We think only through our eyes, through our mind, through our culture, and we judge other people for their culture to be wrong, right? Well, it's wrong. It's wrong to think like that because there's no such thing as a wrong culture or a right culture. But we don't even know we're thinking it. We're just thinking it, right? It's a, again, it's a human thing. Is it good? No, we need to change it. But it's human. Each of us is thinking from our own place, from our own life experience, from our own culture, from our own personality, profession, everything that makes us us, or me, it's not us, me. And we think we are the center of the universe and everything that happens around me, I judge through I am doing things right. I mean, if I weren't doing them right, I wouldn't be doing them, right? And so I'm right. Everyone around me who's not doing the same thing is wrong. 
there is a lot of theory and a lot of research that's been done along the years to describe cultural differences or variations. So if you think about it, it's not like two windows. It's like a continuum, right? That has one edge and another edge and then everything in between. And 99.9% .9 of us are somewhere in between somewhere along this line, closer here, closer there, in the middle, really, really close to one end, you know, we're all different. And our cultures have values that are different in where they are placed. None of these are right or wrong, good or bad. This is not about that at all. It's just it is. That's what it is. Each of these variations, these extremes works well wherever it works. It's when they come together, it's like clouds. That's where you have the thunder and the, and the lightning and the storm. You know, one of the really funny things I found when I came to Canada is what Canadians think about Americans. Because from where I come from, it's the same. But try to take Can tell Canadians that they're just like Americans and Americans are like Canadians, it will be your last day on the job, right? <laughs> because obviously Canadians are very different from Americans. And the, one of the reasons is because Americans are farther on the, along the line of individualism than Canadians. Canadians are Again, where? In the, in the middle, in the middle, nowhere, in the middle. And so Americans are perceived to be arrogant because they say that they speak their thing. It's, again, even such close cultures that from China or the Middle East or Europe, you don't see the difference, it's huge, you know? And I will tell you that there are a lot of different other diversity uh, issues and differences that impact on how we communicate with our environment. And for example, the client driven versus the expert driven. Again, these are closely related to the equality, hierarchy, individual, collective. It sort of flows along the same lines. So the expert driven people would say, I'm the expert, I know what I'm saying, just do what I say, because that's the right thing. I don't need to prove it to you. I don't need to explain it to you. I don't need to persuade you. I'm the, that's why I'm the expert, right? The client-driven people will say, there's no such thing as expert. Everyone is an expert on something. You have an opinion? Prove it to me. Persuade me. Get my buy-in. I don't buy that you're an expert, prove it to me. And it's a very difficult thing that many of us as immigrants encounter in Canada. Because many of us come from environments where we have earned our expertise through hard work and life experience and age and everything and the university we went to. And suddenly it's as if we have no authority, we have no say, no one no one looks at us as experts, right? We need to persuade and we need to motivate. What's with that? It's a very difficult transition. What we need to understand is that experts have power even in client-centered environments. It's just this power works differently. You need to learn how to persuade. You need to learn how to get your way. You need to learn how to be an expert in the client-centered environment. It doesn't mean that you no longer have value. That's not what it means. Please believe me when I tell you. Don't lose your self-value because of that. Because I know many who have gone through a lot of pain understanding how things are different, done differently. And again, the Canadian environment is right smack in the middle. Because we are client driven, but we want respect. We still have our say, we still have our expertise. We're a little bit of expert driven, but we still have to consider our clients, and everyone is our client, even our pets, you know. So it's that <laughs> middle, 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 middle thing. And confrontation and avoidance, what uh, the lady here spoke earlier, it's 
you know, do you say everything in someone's face or do you not say and you, you speak in private and you don't make people lose face? And it's that, again, it's that difference. So you can see how many cultural traps we have as human beings moving from one, one culture to another. And when Canadians tell you soft skills, soft skills, soft skills, that's what they mean. They mean, and I'll just, again, formal, informal, you know, do you speak formally, sir, would you like this? Or you say, hey, Nama, do you want to come, you know? That is also a cultural thing. You know, I had many students who, for maybe 20 times, I had to tell them to stop calling me Dr. Israel, because I, although I am a doctor, I have my PhD. I come from a culture where I don't feel comfortable with that. I'm Nama. That's it. And they didn't feel comfortable calling me now because that's disrespectful. Right? And again, it was that. So there are so many things that can go wrong, but what can we do right? How can we do things right? Hold on. So first of all, see the need and recognize the benefits. And if there's anything that I've succeeded in today is if you leave today and say, wow, I never thought about it this way. You know what? I better open up my eyes a little bit and see how things are working. And maybe the soft skill is not a bad thing to look into. I've done my work, OK? That's my main purpose today, is really helping you open up to the possibility that it's OK to extend yourself into other cultural norms, to understand that in the same way you're being judged, you judge others and other judge, and you need to adapt and you need to help other people understand where you're coming from in the way that you communicate and you do things. Explain yourself. Don't assume they understand why you do things the way you do. So open up your mind. Open up. Let go of the I am the universe. None of us is. None of us is right and none of us is wrong. Everyone is doing things for a good reason for themselves and even when we have this what we call the twilight zone, it's like this weird thing going on, you're communicating with someone or you're doing things that are so weird that make no sense to us, there must be a good reason why they're doing it. And all you need to do is ask and say, you know what, where I come from, this is how we would handle this situation. I see this situation being handled differently here. Could you explain to me what, what's the sense that in that and maybe, you know, maybe I can learn from you and you can learn from me? That's enough. You can't believe how helpful Canadians want to be and are when you ask them. When you just admit to the fact that you don't understand this difference, they are eager to help. And that's why there are so many mentors out there who want to help you. It's just up to you to want this help. Okay? Here's the million dollar question, people. How could I improve what I did? And people will be happy to give you good advice. And if you take their advice, you will do it right. And eventually, it won't feel like you're standing on your head. Seek guidance and feedback. There are so many organizations that offer mentoring. Go and seek mentoring. These are the people. Many of them, by the way, are immigrants themselves, like myself, who have gone through this journey and now are eager to help people like myself. You know, Others are Canadians, born Canadians, who really want to help you integrate and, and get the advantage of your talent, go and look for this help. Be open to it. Don't think that you're, you, only people that that's something wrong with them will need this service. That's not true. That's not how it is. Okay? And the last thing, the final, final thing is, when you leave today, this session, and go to the next one, try and find a goal for yourself. Ask yourself the following questions. One thing I would like to improve now that I know that things are different and one way that I can use to improve it. 
one thing. Every voyage starts with a single step, okay? And I wish you for this step to be the first and lead you to your success. Thank you so much.